Hey, Big Beast Tribe, you can't give a review on Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. I already got my opinion from other YouTubers, and plus, didn't this show already get cancelled? I mean, my god, Think Peace Drop, you were just too late with this review! <sighs> now that we've got that out of the way... <clears throat> Hi. So, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop live-action show isn't great, but I think that like 99.9% .9 of the human population predicted that this wasn't going to be good. Like, I knew what I was getting myself into. I mean, it's another Netflix live action anime adaptation. I mean, there's a certain expectation of these adaptations to be, um, oh yeah, fucking terrible. But, but I, I thought differently, okay? I, I went into this live action adaptation not hate watching it and I wanted it to at the least be decent and, and as you can probably tell by my mannerisms and by the tone of my voice and by the title of this video um yeah it it isn't decent it, it's not great but why wasn't it great why wasn't it decent those are the questions that I will be answering with this review I watched every episode from 1 to 10. Twice! Okay, okay guys, twice! So I think that my opinion is um, automatically better than like 90% of people who have reviewed this on YouTube. Who just watched like one episode, skipped to like the 10th episode, and then gave their whole review on it. But anyways, we'll be covering each episode, seeing what they changed from the original anime how they reworked some of the plots for the original anime, for the live action show, and at the end I'll give it a final rating. The timestamps for this video are in the description below. And with that being said... Let's get on with this review. <laughs> Okay, um, let me get my notes out, and okay, let's get started. So, right off the bat, I'm noticing that the live action adaptation doesn't translate well in live action, which is something you're going to hear a lot about in this review. But the beginning scene takes parts in dialogue from the opening scene of Cowboy Bebop knocking on Heaven's Door movie, you know, that gas station robbery scene and everything. Then it cuts to the theme song slash title card, which, to be honest, it isn't really that bad. I mean, they kept the original song, Tank, which is kinda all they could do, honestly. Like, what other song were you gonna choose for this theme? It, it literally can't be replaced. <laughs> but, um, the transitions look nice, the parts where they're running look kind of awkward. But overall, it gets a uh, okay out of 10. I like some of the shot choices and the overall setting looks pretty straight, but then some of the editing is weird in some places, but the story was adapted from the Cowboy Bebop Knocking on Heaven's Door movie and episode one of the original anime. I went back to the original anime to see how they adapted the live action's plot. What did they change? Are there differences? And actually, there are. For episode one, the plot in the live action, they portray Asmoth and his girl's relationship as more romantic than the anime which saw their relationship as more of an abusive one. In the live action, Asmoth dies to getting hit with a bullet in the neck in a firefight, whereas in the anime, Asmoth's girl is the one that kills him because she realizes that they won't be able to live a new life on Mars together. And that's the problem with a lot of these plot lines in the live action. They were just already objectively done better in the anime, and the live action just doesn't translate these already told stories well, like at all, even when you look at it apart from the anime. 
you know, I, I don't mean to compare or anything like that, but that's just my opinion on it. Like how one of my friends pointed out to me, the fight choreography looks off. I mean, you can tell because there are some scenes where it legit looks like some Nickelodeon original movie, do-it-yourself YouTube video quality crap. And when it comes to the casting, like, there's a scale when it comes to these things. Because you got Avatar The Last Airbender movie, then Death Note Netflix adaptation, and then this. And for what it's worth, the casting could have been a lot worse, but it could have been a lot better. Because actually, my friend made a way better cast list, and honestly, these are better choices than what the live action adaptation went with. But anyways, this episode 2 was adapted from episode 22 of the original anime, and I like how Jet's character was done. Spike and Faye, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm fighting to come up with any compliments, so that tells you all you need to know, honestly. <laughs> But, um, I don't have much to say about episode 2, to be honest, so let's move on. So right off the bat, there's this weird as fuck scene with Jet and Woodcock. Now, you've probably seen this all over Twitter, but but just just look at this. Jet Black. <laughs> How are you, Woodcock? Better. Now there's a tall glass of creamy chocolate milk standing in my eye line. Me, you. Two bottles if we're feeling dangerous. Sounds to me like blackmail. Damn right it is, because Jet, you are black and you are male. Like, who wrote this? Who wrote these lines? Was it you? Was it you? Like, goddamn, this does not come off as sexy or flirty at all. It just comes off as Woodcock fetishizing Jet and viewing him as a sex object and not as a normal person. And coming from a um black man myself, yeah, the white woman fetishizing the black man is weird. And that dialogue was, like, terrible. Why did you add this in? <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, yeah, overall, this episode had a lot of cringy dialogue, and again, there are just some weird-ass shot choices, and sometimes it literally looks worse than whatever the fuck Nickelodeon was cooking up back in 2015. Then there was this weird bitty ass- Uh, uh, mm, 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 uh, no, no, I, 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 I can't show this, or else YouTube will get on my ass, I, I'm- I'm not, I'm not doing it, so, um, let's move on. Okay, so Hakeem dies, they don't get the bounty, Jet tries to give his daughter Ayn as a gift, but his ex-wife rejects it, so he keeps Ayn, and, oh, by the way, Ayn was definitely the saving grace of this episode, and the saving grace of the entire series, but when a cute dog can't even save your show from being the equivalent of The Big Day by Chance the Rapper, then, uh, you, you've got a problem on your hands. Anyways, Spike has an encounter with Vicious, but it comes off more as underwhelming rather than the badass moment that it was supposed to be for Spike. And parts of this episode was adapted from episode 2 of the original anime. And honestly, while I was watching this, I thought that this was the worst episode of the show. Like, it couldn't get any worse than this. <laughs> Right? Now Faye is trying to get information about her past. The eco-terrorists show up, Faye gets shot by the terrorist, and again, I'm noticing unfunny dialogue, like, uh... I'm not high, dickwads, I'm telling the truth! Oh shit, that is not bad. But yeah, Julia is trying to set up a meeting with Mal and Vicious. Jet, Faye, and Spike defeat the eco-terrorist, and yeah, I didn't really have much to say about this episode. It was adapted from episode 4 of the original anime, and they changed the plot so that it wouldn't be the same as the anime. But when looking back at the live action by itself, it's not really that bad, but thematically the plot was done way better in the anime. Even though that is to be expected, so let's move on to the halfway point. Which 
Jet is trying to get Udai because he fucked him over when he was a cop back in the day. While Spike and Faye are trying to find a bounty that they can agree on to catch and turn in. Spike and Faye have a flexing contest where they show off their scars from the bounties that they've caught while Vicious and Mao have their meeting. And as the deal is looking south, Julia makes the deal go through with Mao by singing to Mao. Spike and Faye are getting along more. Jet finds out that his partner double crossed him from the beginning and the episode ends. Now the story is adapted from episode 16 of the original anime. And in my opinion, the story of Jet, Udai, and his partner were done fine. Like I said before, I like the way that the show did Jet's character, but the story slash plot was just done better in the anime in my opinion. But looking at it by itself, it's not the worst story ever. They mention Ed this time as a hacker who gives Jet new information of an old bounty. Oh, oh, and uh, trust me, we will definitely get to Ed later. Spike goes through trippy VR sequences of his subconscious. Then there's a scene of Faye and the mechanic that was working on Jet's ship getting intimate. And Faye opens up about her issues and how she can't remember anything from her past. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get this clear right now. If you thought that I was gonna be one of those decordering type of YouTube commentators with this, that, that like bitches about go woke, go broke, then <laughs> I don't know what to tell you because you're wrong. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> I think that they did it fine. And in all honesty, Faye's change in sexuality for this adaptation doesn't bother me at all. But the VR scenes look like some amateur YouTube shit and at the end, Spike still holds that he will never let Julia go and the episode ends. Now this story was adapted from episode 23 of the original anime and again, there is a theme here. <laughs> it's just thematically and emotionally done better in the anime. But apart from the Disney Channel original movie type beat scenes, I, I guess it works fine by itself. This episode opens with Faye's fake mother trying to get a lift from Faye, and in exchange, Faye can get her identikit back. Julia confronts Anne about her knowing that Spike is still alive. Jet has obvious suspicions about Faye and Whitney's relationship, and Jet confronts Faye about her lying to him. The Iron Mink shows up and confronts Whitney, and Jet leaves the ship with Whitney so Faye can get her identikit from Whitney, while Jet and Spike take the tracker that was in Whitney's wedding ring and lead the Iron Mink in another direction. Vicious sets a deal with the other villains and plans to go ahead with his coup d'etat. Faye and Whitney get a ride and as bad as their acting is, it, it works anyways. Then Julia goes to Mal to get her to double cross Vicious and kill him. As Jet goes to see his daughter's recital and Faye is about to find out who she really is. And Spike gets his ass beat in the background and it's actually pretty funny, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Faye finds a VHS tape, the Iron Mink tracks them down, and it turns out that the Iron Mink knew what was going on the whole time, and did this as a kink roleplay for Whitney, uh, okay sure. Then Faye steals Whitney's ship, plays the VHS tape back on the bebop, and the episode ends. Now this story is adapted from episode 15 and 18 of the original anime. And episode 18 is actually one of my favorite episodes from the Cowboy Bebop anime. And for what it's worth, I think that they did an actual decent job of reworking the story from the anime in my opinion. They captured the same emotion when Faye plays the VHS tape from episode 18 of the original anime, I think. And it's, it's not that bad, like if I had to pick what was my favorite episode from the show, I think this will be it, so yeah. Off the rip, I'm noticing some awkward shots, like, wh what is this shot right here? Um, 
but Vicious breaks out Mad Peru to kill Spike. Then Spike and Jet decide to do something nice for Faye and make today her new birthday. Then Peru shows up and again, the camera work looks so off with Peru fighting Spike. But moving on, Peru sees Ayn and has this PTSD moment. Um, Spike gets away and goes back to the bebop to heal. But why the fuck is Faye so annoying in this scene? The guy was such a creeper. He looked me in my eye and he was like, die, die, die. Not now, Faye. I saw a guy. He was way less banged up than you and he got one of these chem treatments and he was crying like a baby. Not helping. Anyways, Jet meets with Woody again to get info on Peru and she tells him that Spike might have a very trouble past and then she does her, oh my gosh, she does her fetishizing thing again. The greater the time, the greater the payback. So protect that ass of yours, Jet. I'm gonna want what's mine. Like, oh my god, stop. Please stop this. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh. Then we get to see more of Peru's flashbacks. Jet is prying Spike on what Peru told him while they were fighting. And then Peru hacks Ayn and tells Spike to meet him in two hours at this abandoned amusement park. Jet thinks that Spike's past is that he was a part of a special ops team, which is, you know, obviously not true. Then Spike decides not to go alone and leaves Ayn because, well, yeah, they don't want Peru hacking and showing himself through Ayn, but that's probably the worst thing that this show has done so far. I mean, just, just look at him. Anyways, Vicious goes through with his plan and everything works in his favor. Turns out, he predicted the double crossing. And the fight scene is okay, I guess. I mean, I didn't notice any glaring issues with it. But Mal tells Vicious that Julia planned the double crossing all along. Vicious kills her. And then Spike ditches Faye and Jet to go face Peru alone. Again, the camera work here just looks bad. Like, why does it still have this Nickelodeon original movie look to it? Like, I, I don't understand it. But Spike wins by tossing a toy dog in front of Peru, makes him have another PTSD moment, flies him into the sky, and the bombs fall off of Peru, which makes the park explode. <laughs> Vicious confronts Julia about Julia's plan to double cross Vicious, and then the episode ends. Now, this episode is adapted from episode 20 and 25 of the original anime. Now, it's obviously not the same story, the live action has different characters in the mix, but I don't like this episode that much, cause, okay look, for example, in the anime, maybe we knew that knives could penetrate Peru's shield, and you had the feeling that he survived by pure luck, but in the live action series, they changed it to where Spike just automatically knows his weakness and then tells the audience that. And it's just little changes like that to the plot lines and story that make me believe that this live action show doesn't translate well. While the story in the live action could have been worse, it could have been a lot better like you didn't have to make the certain changes that you did i feel like we open with a flashback of vicious and spike back when they were working in the syndicate together and they were trying to work out a deal with the neptune cartel and just <laughs> look at vicious's horny ass when julia starts singing like nigga what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, I actually like this shot right here. Like, this is a good shot. But anyways, Julia gets promoted to a headliner. The deal goes south with the Neptune Cartel and Spike. Look, look, he uh, he uh, says the famous line. Whatever happens, happens. For you, maybe. Spike and Julia start to build a connection. Then Vicious sees Kaching, a member of the Neptune Cartel, runs over him with his car beats the shit out of him <laughs> and let Spike take Julia home. Then we get to see some actual cool 
dynamic transitions that go from Julia's affair with Spike to what Vicious is doing to ka -ching. The Syndicate wants Spike to kill Vicious for crossing the line with the Neptune Cartel and killing ka -ching, of course, and Vicious's father actually wants Spike to do it, but Spike says, fuck that, and just kills everyone in the Neptune Cartel. Makes plans with Julia to leave the Syndicate with her, Vicious obviously finds out because his father actually told him, and he takes Julia, finds Spike, and shoots him into the water, and the episode ends. Now, parts of this story is adapted from the original anime story when it comes to Spike, Vicious, Julia, and the Syndicate. Yeah, 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 you already know about that. But it's basically a flashback episode, and they reworked the original anime story to fit with the live action story, of course, and parts of it seems like they're actually making an attempt to tell a good story. Like I said before, I like some of the shots in this episode and some of the dynamic transitions that they use, but I still don't think that, that the story in general translates that well in live action, but yeah, that's, that's all I gotta say about this one. Okay, last episode, here we go. Okay, so we start off where episode eight ended. Vicious becomes the head of the syndicate. He confronts Julia about the plan that she set up with Mao and Vicious plans to hurt her and Fearless. Jet is looking for Spike. Faye finds a clue that can help her remember her past as Spike wakes up at Anne's bar. Jet and Faye show up and Jet learns that Vicious kidnapped his daughter and that Spike was a part of the syndicate. Again, the camera work looks ugh, hard to look at. <laughs> and they end off the scene with this. It's his life for Kimmy's, that's the play. Well, that fucked up math doesn't add up. I won't carry that weight. No, because, um, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> while I'm making this video, I just had to pause and just add this in. Um. What in the Greg's Anatomy hospital drama ass writing is this? I can't believe they looked at this, edited it, it went through post production and everything, and they said this was the one. <laughs> this was the one right here. <laughs> this is gonna give us ten out of ten stars. Oh. <laughs> Moving on. Oh my lord. Uh, Julia tells one of Vicious's guards that. Vicious will kill her after this situation is over with. Julia's convincing works. The guard kills the other two men. The car tumbles over and crashes. Jet seems like he's going to trade Spike for his daughter, but they don't. They actually try to kill Vicious, but it doesn't work and they surrender. Then Julia gets out of the car wreck to find Vicious, and damn, I, I know the guard told you to go and find Vicious, but damn, you, <laughs> you just want to leave her in the car like that? Damn, well, okay, uh, then we transition to Spike and Jet beaten up and tied up in a church as Vicious shows up, and I actually like this shot right here, it, it actually looks pretty nice, and just when everything goes wrong, Faye shows up. Mows down the syndicate and saves Jet, Spike, and Kimmy, but Spike leaves himself behind to go finish off Vicious. Spike finds Vicious and they finally fight. And, and look, they, they do the famous scene from the original anime. That's cool. But yeah, anyways, as Vicious is about to kill Spike, um, okay, see, now as I am writing this, I, I feel like I have to put this in here. Um, I just want you to get ready for the weirdest twist with this show <laughs> because Julia shows up and shoots Vicious, okay? Okay? And now Julia is the villain who wants to be the head of the syndicate and it was at the 36 minute 23 seconds mark where Julia fucking shoots Spike out of the church when I paused the show and said, man, what the? Ah, 
Then Greenberg plays while Spike is falling down. Jet drops off his daughter. Faye leaves to go and remember her past. Then Julia confronts Vicious one more time. And God, I hate how they did her character in this. But Spike and Jet have a falling out, obviously, and Spike is on his own now. Then we get to the infamous Ed scene. Okay, here we go. So Spike walks out of a bar, passes out, and Ed finally shows up. And, and yep, it, it's just as bad as people say it is. The reason being because Ed just does not work in live action. It, it literally does not translate well, like, at all. Like, <laughs> why did they do this? Why? It, it's, it's like making the fucking Animaniacs live action. Shit just does not work. I, I, and, and I don't blame the actress. I blame the director and whoever else allowed this shit to happen. Because this was never going to work or translate well in live action. Anyways, the show was now over. The worst episode of the show was done. And we're never going to see where they were going to take this anyways because they canceled the show. <laughs> Man, now this episode was adapted from episode 5 of the original anime with a live action reworking it by making Julia the villain and fucking shooting Spike out of the church instead of Vicious, you know, shoving Spike out of the church. And honestly, I... Uh, Man, I don't know what to say anymore. Like, this show just doesn't work for me. And I I just keep asking myself, why did they make this? Why didn't they leave Cowboy Bebop alone? Just so many whys. And even after I've watched all of the show from episode 1 to 10 twice, I, I still don't know why they did this. You know, Cowboy Bebop is a work of art that means so much to me. The original anime was one of my first experiences with anime, and I've never seen anything like it before. Through my rewatching of the anime recently, I mean, just everything about it is just phenomenal. Every episode has the most beautiful shot choices, the character designs look so cool, the writing is great. The voice acting is what other dubs should strive to be, bar none, you know? So, it, it, it's just, why would you touch this masterpiece and make it live action for no reason? It wasn't necessary. It wasn't needed. Nobody asked for this. And even when you look at it separate from the anime, it doesn't hold up well. I think that everyone knew that this show wasn't going to be good or great, but I wanted it to be decent. I was so vocal about how I was waiting for this to come out because I actually wanted to enjoy myself, but I just didn't like this show. And at the end of the day, that's what sucks about this, because I don't want to hate watch anything. I don't want to become one of those YouTubers or commenters who hate everything that they watch. But man, this show just wasn't good. From the camera work to the dialogue choices, the awkward fetishizing of Jet, the casting choices, the plot lines, the way that they butchered Julia as a character, and Ed's first and funny enough last scene. It just isn't great, but you know, at least I had fun going back to the original anime and enjoying myself with that show, but Sadly, overall, Netflix's Cabo Bebop just isn't great. You know, there's a scale to these types of shows. And you know what I think? I think that the show isn't Avatar or Death Note live action levels of bad, but it still is bad. And with that being said, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop gets a 3 out of 10 from me. Through my watch of this show, I've realized that I'm not going to check out any more live action anime adaptations. 
you know, Yu Yu Hakusho is supposed to be getting a live action rework. And so is Avatar The Last Airbender. But I don't feel like checking them out. I love both of those shows to death. And from what I've seen with live action anime adaptations, they just don't translate well in live action. And I rather enjoy the original work than having to let myself suffer through the live action rework. So yeah, that's my review on Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. It's not great. And as you can tell, I am very disappointed, but at least it got canceled, so we won't have to see any more of this. But yeah, um, thanks for watching this video, man. Um, I appreciate the support. Go subscribe to the channel. And yeah, Netflix's Cowboy Bebop just isn't great. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, okay. Bye.